everybody. Um, I'm going to do something different this evening. I'm going to actually take you through the process as I create one of my ACEO miniature paintings. As you know, they are 3.5 by 2.5 inches, the size of a playing card. So I'm going to see if this works because I don't have a professional camera and lighting and all that brouhaha. So I'm going to try and um, basically use this laptop and see if it works. So I'll show you as much as I can. Thank you. Hope you can see this. I'm going to be using watercolor pencils tonight. And um, of course I can't find my regular pencil. Here it is. I'm going to trace the shape of this playing card so I know I'll have the exact size. ACEOs, which stands for Artists, Cards, Editions, and Originals, are all that exact dimension, size of a playing card or a baseball card, which is the same. So this one I'm doing, making my guide, my pattern. It's the Queen of Hearts, of course. Pencils that I use, the watercolor pencils, are by, they're called Design by Bryson Neal. I, they're Sakura. I believe they're from Germany, but I'm not positive. So I'm going to start out real simple. I don't know what kind of flower it will be. Usually these aren't real flowers. They're just Stacy flowers that I create, and that's what works for me. So I'm going to start by sketching my design out with the watercolor pencil. Some people like to dip their pencils in water. Um, some even wet the paper and then use the pencil. I prefer not to. I use a brush to do my blending. And for one, it ruins your watercolor pencils and you go through them really quick and they get dull quick and it puddles and gets nasty. So these are basic stem and leaf designs here. Okay. Sometimes I also use um, a standard, what not a watercolor pencil, but a colored pencil for certain highlights and detail. Usually after it's dry, uh, it's not necessary. They will not blend with water, so please don't force them to. You'll ruin your paper and your painting. Um, it's just not worth it. It's also not worth it when I lose my pencils. Where the heck did that go? Huh. It's crazy. Well, anyway, speaking of devil, here's the non-watercolor pencil. This is um, a Gold Faber by Faber Castell. Not the very best, but far better than Crayola and Prismacolor and all that other stuff that's probably best left for coloring not painting and you may say well would you just drawing right now no I will show you exactly what I'm doing in a second I will create the bloom here's a red these don't have the names of the pigments on them they just have a number and they really don't even correspond to your standard pigment side, uh, you know, name. So I'm only guessing at what they actually are. This is um, kind of an Asian Oriental type bloom. Um, 
I do these all the time. I don't know what they are. <laughs> but I'll show you the magic in a second. I'm adding an orange. This looks like what they call permanent orange. The other one, I believe, was a cadmium red light or medium. Again, they're not labeled, so I, I just don't know. Okay. If anyone's interested in a class in this, message me. We can work something out. I can be very happy. I'm very happy to teach you. I'm going to go in with this weird color. I, I don't know what it's called. It's like a cerise. And I'm going to use this to add depth. This may not make a lot of sense to you, but I've had people ask me what I do, a tutorial or at least a demonstration on what I do. I think people just don't really believe I create art. <laughs> so, but damn it, yes I do. This is what I do. This is what keeps me calm. This is what I do in the evenings, in the mornings, in the afternoon, or sometimes late in the night. It keeps me grounded. It helps me think. I pray through this. I meditate through this. It brings me joy. And if it brings you joy as well, then we're good. So I have a simple paper cup here with a brush. It's a flat brush. It's old. It's very old. It's actually a master's touch, which again is not my favorite brand, but it tends to work for this process. So here we go. If you can see, the brush is wet with just water and it begins to blend the watercolor pencil, turning it to liquid watercolor. See? At this point is when I take control of the paint and I try to let it do what it would do as if it were nature. I don't do any of my art exacting as you know. Just not what I do. Of course my neighbor decides to use a weed eater while I'm doing this. I can hear it. Okay. I'll show you what happens when you try to stick your pencil in water. I mean, it works, but it's not my preferred method. For this particular type of flower, it's okay. My suggestion to anyone embarking on art, whether it's a hobby or something you just want to do. Don't stress with it. Nothing is perfect. There's nothing perfect growing outside. So don't expect it to be perfect on your paper. This is what I tell people. It's supposed to be enjoyable and not something that just gives you the, the jeepers creepers every time you pick up your brush. Why bother? Just enjoy it and have a good time with it. Okay, here we go. I don't know if you can see this. Now it's blending. I don't know if you can see or if you're having trouble seeing me. This is my first time doing this. And again, I don't have uh, proper professional lighting and all that because while I do have a YouTube channel it's not that vital to me at this point. I think I'm going to bring one down from the top. Three petals. Can you hear me wheezing? <clears throat> Excuse me. This has been a bad summer for 
anyone who has asthma and respiratory problems like I do. I'm not ready for fall or winter. I didn't get to have summer yet, so still waiting on that boat ride and that pool party and cookout and lake escape and all the stuff that I know a lot of you guys did this year and in past years. But, you know, hey, I do things that other people don't get to do. Like, some people don't get to do this. And it brings me a lot of serenity and peace. And sometimes I use it as an escape back to things that are dear to me. A lot of people think I live in the past. No, I don't live in the past. I, I respect the past. I particularly respect my past. And, you know, like Carter Woodson said, Dr. Woodson said, you sure can't know where you're going unless you know where you came from. And these things take me there. Sometimes that's just a safe place for me. I know people who have Alzheimer's, you know, when, when they get to that point where you can't, you think you can't reach them, they don't want you to reach them because they're in a safe place that means something to them. They're back where they want to be. I don't think I have Alzheimer's, but if I did, and if I ever do, at least you'll know from me telling you this, that's my safe place. Okay. I'm not done. I'm almost done with this phase of it. But I will be wrapping it up pretty soon because, again, I don't know how much you can actually see or not. And I don't want to torture you with this. Um, what you see me doing is pulling the paint past my original line that I drew. I, I, it's something I just choose to do. It just gives it a little bit more depth and definition. It makes it more like nature's reality. I spoke with a curator from a gallery in the UK just actually yesterday. And he told me that he liked my art, but he felt that my florals, some of them were, but all were not. Um, not necessarily abstract impressionism. He said they were expressionism. So I had completely forgotten about that entire genre. And I looked at them and I thought about it. And he's probably right. So let's just say that it is. I'm going to stop here for now. And... Um, now you can see a little bit of what it is that I do. Thanks so much for joining me.